I paced back and forth anxiously in the kitchen, peeking into the foyer when I heard the door shut. Spencer was leaning against the front door, peering outside. He shook his head slightly and waved me back. I ducked back into the kitchen, biting my thumbnails I waited for the sound of the car. We finally managed to talk mom and dad into a date night for the evening, which would leave the house empty for Spencer and I to, uh, deal with the fairy problem. Wednesday and Thursday night had been quiet. We used all the protections Allie suggested, but since we couldn't get mom and dad out of the house, there wasn't much more we could do. Friday morning, we found a fairy favor in the kitchen on the table in plain view. Well, that's rather bold. Mom, thankfully, thought it was something I gathered up for her or something. I didn't like it. Until that moment, they had always hidden them, but this one had been just sitting in the center of the table when we got up. It felt like a warning or a challenge. That's what I was thinking. I peeked back out into the foyer, and this time Spencer gave me a thumbs up. Finally! I hurried to the back door and peered across the yard. I could just see Allie's head peeking over the gate. I waved her toward the house. We are being so sneaky this time around. We only had a few hours, so we were going to have to work fast, and I just hoped a few hours would be enough. The first order of business was to gather everyone around the table hashing out a plan. Allie was with us, and that alone was enough to make me feel more confident about our chances of resolving this for good. Shelly was also with us. Given that she was another talented witch, it was reassuring to have her helping. I was really grateful she agreed to come over when I called. Drayson had also showed up, which... Well, Drayson was Drayson, but I was kind of glad to have him anyway. <laughs> he could be weirdly reliable at times. And did see or not, he was definitely an expert at magic, being that he was kind of a magic creature and all. Besides, he'd seen what was going on firsthand, so that was helpful. Elliot, too. I mean, he didn't immediately strike one as the best person to have in a climactic fight against fairies or whatever. Boy strong. Don't let his looks deceive you. But I come to realize he was definitely a good guy to have around. Truth. I will say that if there was one person I definitely wanted to have around for this, it was Danny. Super reliable and definitely the kindest werewolf I knew. Aw, we love you, Danny. The only werewolf I knew, but who was counting? We don't talk about the others. <laughs> Especially not Derek and Sean. I, uh, I definitely didn't trust Brenna. Especially after you and literally warning me about her. But she was a fairy expert, so I suppose I was glad to have her too. I mean, if I could avoid strangling her. Or being strangled by her. Sheesh. Of course, we also had Spencer and Ewan with us. Not sure if Spencer would be much help, but I was obviously glad Ewan was there. I'm surprised Corvin's not here. I know, like, Ori are more his specialty, but he is a wizard. I mean, apart from Brenna, he was probably the most knowledgeable about fairies out of everyone I knew. Okay, so let's get started. I told Vilas what's going on, so he was willing to let us off any intern duties for now. Fortunately, he gets that this is important. Glad to see that even if the rest of the agency doesn't give a damn, he does. It isn't that they don't care, but the situation with fairies is... complicated. I sighed softly. I know, I guess. Where exactly do we start with all this? We don't have much time. I think we should start with some wards. Around the house and around some of the interior rooms. I'm surprised we didn't have this meeting at the club room in the past couple of days so we could just, like, do what we need to do instead of wasting the precious time we have making the plan now. Like, shouldn't we have done this last couple of days? And then be like, all right, everyone scatter. You know your assignment. Let's go. We can try for things specifically geared toward keeping fairies out of the house completely. It's possible to ward the house against fairies, but it will make it difficult for you and me to be here as well. We can probably make some sort of charm that would allow the two of you inside, though. 
In the end, we only need to outlast them. We already decided that after Samhain, they'll probably back off. I mean, yeah, we've decided that. We don't know if that's true. There's still plenty of time for them to cause issues, though. And the closer we get to Samhain, the stronger they'll get. They've been quiet the last two nights, though. Then again, there was that fairy favor they left on the table. We can't count on them staying quiet much longer. Oh, I didn't say I wanted to count on that. Believe me, I'm not taking any more chances with these weirdos. We can try some traditional fairy pains, but to be honest, I'm not sure that'll be enough. They don't even work against all fae, from what I understand. And they're also less effective against some of the stronger ones. That's true. We're not dealing with some solitary fae who wants to cause trouble. We're up against the unseelie court here. That may be true, but it's not like they're going to send the Sluow after a single changeling. I really hope you're right. And frankly, we have to remember that all this has to be done without our parents noticing. Yeah, that's an added level of complexity to deal with. When will they be back anyway? I'm not sure, so we need to get this done quickly. Is this really going to work? All this stuff about wards and banes. It's all we have. I bit my lip and studied him quietly. He was very, very pale. Looked scared to death. I couldn't blame him. This wasn't exactly the smoothest transition into the world of the paranormal. Are you okay? I don't know. I know the feeling. Come on, guys. It's going to be fine. Allie, I know our whining is probably annoying, but... These people have been after us for... A long time. We're worried. I know you are. We all are. But it's going to be okay. I'm sure of it. I hope you're right. The others had been largely silent through the conversation, but I guess there wasn't much to add anyway. It seemed like we had a plan. Or the start of one, anyway. What about the fairy ring? Well, Shelly and I found a way to get rid of it without rousing the Fae. But it requires a new moon, and the next one isn't until Tuesday. Great. And what about our little brownie friend? That thing is not my friend. All these wards and banes won't hurt it, right? Nothing we're planning will actually harm it. And besides, it's only for a few days. One hopes. One does. I do have a question. What's up? Well, everything you guys are talking about, not that I pretend to understand it all, is just prevention. What happens if we need to actively defend ourselves? I'm hoping it doesn't come to that. And if it does? Nora, do you still have the bell I gave you? Um... Well, which is it? <laughs> Is one of these a lie? Does the bell teleport wherever I deem it should be? I mean, I would hope she's been carrying it with her. It's it's a good thing to have. I've been, um, I mean, okay. It's there. I pulled it out of my coat pocket. Call me paranoid, but I've been carrying it around with me. I'm like, he gave it to you as a present. I would hope you were keeping it on you. Ewan smiled slightly when I held out my hand with a little bell. He closed my hand around it. Good. Keep it with you at all times. Fairies hate iron, especially those that are less, um... less used to living in human society. It doesn't bother me much, but with the ones we're dealing with here, it will definitely scatter them. Keep them at bay. That tiny bell is actually going to be useful. There are stories of entire fairy hosts being scattered by someone tossing a small piece of iron in their midst. They hate the stuff. What did you expect? We take you out back and have you pull a magic sword out of a rock? I have to be honest here. When I called everyone today, I was really disappointed no one jumped up and told me they'd lend me their axe. Or their bow. I'm not picky. <laughs> 
cute. I've heard I am. I'm not really hoping for a legendary sword here. It's just hard to trust bells and weeds to offer much protection. I can try to teach Nora some magic. I wanted to anyway. But I don't think either of you wants to get in a magic squabble with a pure-blood fairy of the Unseely Court. You'd end up skewered. Maybe turned into a mouse if you were lucky. A single... what is it you humans call it? Crash course in magic isn't going to be enough to help you stand up against any of us. Take my word for it. Those bells and weeds have more power than you know. Wow. Brenna admitting a weakness. That was rare. There are pretty ancient magics that wind themselves into natural objects. Plants, stones, and minerals absorb the magic energy from the earth. It steeps inside them and gets altered in strange ways. Ways that don't always mesh well with fairy magic. So don't underestimate the tools we're giving you. And don't underestimate us, either. We'll be keeping an eye on your place for the next few days. If anything happens, just call us. Anyway, we've talked enough. Let's get started before your parents get back. They started working to set things up, but there wasn't that much for Spencer and I to do, really. Allie and Shelley were handling most of the preparations. Ewan helped a little as well. But wards weren't exactly something Spencer and I could help with. We just sat at the kitchen table, kind of taking it all in, and wondering how we'd managed to go from normal teens to having some kind of epic battle with the Unseelie Court. Though it was really more of a standoff than a battle, which was for the best, really. It sounded like we'd get completely trounced in a battle. Danny and Elliot sat with us for a while, mostly going over the way they intended to keep watch over the house. The whole thing had a weird war room vibe. We just needed some epic music to set the mood. Maybe wands and a few references to a dark lord or something. Wait, wait, wait. The whole thing was a little unnerving. Spencer, weirdly, was actually looking more relaxed than he had been at first. Still scared, of course. But it looked like he was adapting to the weird. It was evening by the time everything was finished. Apparently, some of Allie's barriers were intensive enough to take some time to set up. When she and Shelley left, it was with a very firm order to call her the instant anything happened. At all. And it was finally down to just me, Ewan, and Spencer again. I walked Ewan to the foyer as he prepared to leave. I'll be staying at Elliot's tonight, so I'll be nearby, okay? Aw, oh, that's nice. I smirked at him. <laughs> you just going to stay there until Samhain passes? If I have to. I don't want to leave you guys to deal with this alone. I mean, you need someone capable sticking around to help out. I kicked his foot. We're capable. I mean, sort of. Also, shout out to Elliot for being a bro and being like, Yo, you want to keep an eye on your girl? I got you. I'm capable of wrestling you to the ground and putting you in a headlock if I have to. It's true. I've seen her fly at Spencer and do that. Oh no! Unseelie court, beware! <laughs> He laughed, but the laughter quickly faded and he stared down at me seriously. If you need anything, just call. I'm not kidding. I want to know if anything happens. I will. I hope nothing does. I just want this finished. I want them to give up and go away. I'm sure they will soon enough. They have better things to do than perpetually stalk some shorty that got away. So help me, if you do not stop harping on my height, I'm going to get a baseball bat and knock that head of yours down a rabbit hole. Hey, that's how golf was invented. <laughs> the references. Your threats are getting more and more creative as the days go by. In about five seconds, it's going to be reality, not a threat. I hate to interrupt your... Weird flirting. But mom and dad are probably going to be back soon, so you might want to get your boyfriend out of the house. At the very least, if you're going to murder him, just do it outside. I'm not up for cleaning up some weird mess in here. Thank you, bro. I'm going, I'm going. 
I thought I saw his face color slightly at the way Spencer casually called him my boyfriend, and I know my own face heated up slightly. But neither of us corrected that. And, um... <clears throat> and... I had to try really hard to keep a dumb smile from creeping over my face when you wouldn't let it slide so easily. You guys should make this official at some point, just saying. He stepped outside but stopped on the porch. Do you need anything before I go? A kiss would be nice. Well, there is one thing. What is it? For you to stay safe too. You've gotten all caught up in our problem and I don't want anything to happen to you because of it. Well, I mean, yes, that is true. But I was kind of hoping for that smooch. Can we kiss just in case something goes terrible, Nora? Okay, yeah, please. <laughs> please. Ewan leaned down and gave me a swift, tight hug. Okay, a hug is also acceptable. I'll be fine. Just worry about yourself. He was a little red when he released me and quickly went down the steps. He waved once before he disappeared into Elliot's yard. Ow. Oh. Your taste in guys is definitely weirder than I expected. <laughs> you have no idea, my dude. Shut up. <laughs> the whack. Those punches sound so painful. I punched him on the arm before I fled back inside. We shut the door behind Ewan and... We shut the door behind Ewan and Spencer's phone rang almost immediately. He quickly answered. Hello. Oh, hey, Mom. Yeah, we're just... Hanging out. Okay. Yeah. Not a problem. Sure. Have fun. He hung up, frowning. What was that about? They decided to see a movie, so they won't be back for another few hours. Well, that's probably for the best, really. I guess. After a pause, we sort of meandered silently to the kitchen. There wasn't much to do now but wait. Daylight had all but faded, and the darkness outside was more than a little unnerving. I... need hot chocolate. Want some? Spencer said nothing, but I went to set the kettle on anyway. Today has been... weird. Tell me about it. I mean... On one hand, I know it's all real. I know magic is a thing. Fairies... all of it. I thought I'd accepted it. But then today happened, and I was seeing it all in action, and... I don't know. Feels a little surreal, right? More than a little, actually. I know the feeling. Believe me. I got out two mugs and set them on the counter as I hunted down the cocoa. You were dealing with all this alone since we got back, weren't you? I... I'm sure I didn't make it any easier. You didn't. But you were going through a lot as well, and I'm sure I didn't make that easier for you. Yeah, but you were trying. The only thing I was trying to do was make things more difficult. Thank you for acknowledging this, Spencer. I feel like a jerk. I glanced back at him, sighing. He'd been doing this for two days already, kicking himself over and over for how he'd been acting. I think he could do with a few days of kicking himself over and over for how he's been acting. This has been going on for years, girl. I think it's warranted. <laughs> well, you were acting like a huge jerk. I mean, that's what I would say. I know just saying we should move on is like, well, obviously, but it's easier said than done. <sighs> and if we're going off of everything that Nora's ever done and all the other routes, it's been like... In the end, you weren't wrong. It's just that, man, <laughs> what a messed up situation. I've forgiven you already, you big dork. Look, you didn't do anything wrong, Spencer. You were just reacting to the situation. 
or the only reasonable way you could have interpreted the situation. I think that as much as it was hurtful at times, and as much as it made me so furious at times, the way you acted was reasonable for what you thought was happening. And I don't know that you could have been expected to interpret things differently. Based on what you saw, there weren't many conclusions you could have made. I definitely don't think you could have assumed your sister was trapped in a fairy's body and needed help. I feel like I should have... had more faith in you. But... you did. I mean, sort of. You didn't just assume your sister was evil, right? You assumed I was somewhere and needed help, and that there was an imposter in the house. It's true. And you weren't totally wrong. You just didn't know how to help. I don't blame you for that. On the contrary, I wish I had... I don't know. I wish I'd made Allie say something to you sooner rather than keeping the secret from you. I feel like that would have solved a lot of issues. I feel like my keeping things from you just... didn't help. I've been trying to work out when this really all got started. It probably wasn't the incident five years ago, was it? I mean, that... That wasn't even the first time you vanished. I know. I've been racking my brain about that, too. Ewan and I talked about it as well. It was definitely some time before I turned nine. And... Remember how you told me that you'd been dreaming about the past? That you felt like you were forgetting something? I... I feel the same way. When I was talking to him about it, I remembered that little hill behind our old house. We used to pretend it was a castle or whatever. That... That's what I've been dreaming about. That place. But I'm not sure those are just dreams. So he'd been dreaming about that fairy hell. What happens in your dreams? I felt that little drop of pain behind my eyes again, but wanted to forge on. I felt very strongly like we needed to know what really happened back then. Especially if it was something the Fae didn't want us to know. Well, I dream that... That it's night, and I'm wandering in the house. And when I look outside, there are these glowing lights everywhere just drifting around the yard, so I go outside to look at them. And they're singing. That same singing we used to hear in the woods when we were kids. At first, I think the lights are fireflies, but they're too big, and they... They beckon me into the woods, so I follow. They lead me deep into the trees, to the hill. But it's not like it normally is. The hill is lifted up on pillars, and underneath it is a cave full of light. So I go inside it. Goosebumps rose on my arms when he said that. There was an ominous sense of familiarity when he said that. I... Somehow I didn't want to hear more of this dream. But he kept going. Under the hill is... Another forest. But it's strange. Warmer and full of colorful lights. And people. So, so many people. But when I try to leave, they won't let me go. They, they say I have to stay. And I don't want to stay. I don't want... His voice rose and he was speaking faster, frantically. I reached across the table and took his hand, squeezing. But you didn't have to stay with them. He stopped and looked at me, eyes wide. Because... Because I... I winced as my head started throbbing. I went in after you. Was that... Was that real? I... Think so. I struggled to remember the details. It was like clawing through mud to pull any of them to the surface. And then it hit me. All of it, like lightning. The force of all the memories flooding back left me gripping the table, gasping for air. 
You... You were missing. I remember it now. You disappeared. For... For days. And everyone was out looking for you. I... Went missing. Yes! Yes, I remember now. That is what Kara had been talking about back then. I was with Grandma. And the grown-ups were looking for you, but they wouldn't let me go. So I sneaked away from her. I remember running through the woods calling for you. I ended up there and I could hear you inside crying. But they wouldn't let me in at first. And then I... You agree to take my place. Just like in my dream. A chill ran through me. That's it. I remember now, that white-haired woman. I made a promise with her. How could we have forgotten this? Because someone made us forget. Mom and Dad, too? I don't know. They've never mentioned this at all. They didn't mention it when you disappeared, either. Surely they would have. If you have two kids who vanish into the woods and come back having totally forgotten what happened, then... As a parent, you might play along to avoid bringing back any traumatic memories, I guess. Even after you went missing two more times? Maybe. He stood up suddenly, heading for the living room. I followed him into the foyer. What are you doing? Mom kept clippings when you disappeared. Both times. If I vanish for any length of time, there's definitely some evidence somewhere. He disappeared into the living room and came back with several scrapbooks and albums. The two of us sat at the table pouring through them. They weren't books we usually looked at. They were full of mementos and embarrassing photos. Mom meticulously recorded everything that happened to us as kids. From the time Spencer made a daring escape down the neighborhood street completely naked, to the time I dressed him up in my princess clothes and tied him up in our old treehouse to be rescued. <laughs> Amazing. We were silent for quite a while before Spencer finally let out a small noise of triumph. Found something? There! In the album he had open, there was a tiny gray corner of paper poking out of the back cover. It looked like... two of the pages had been taped together to create a sort of pocket? Spencer gently separated the pages, taking care not to rip them. As we unfolded the pages, we realized it definitely wasn't just one newspaper cutting. There were several ones. Photographs as well. This is... this is it. The headlines all mentioned a missing boy, gone for three days, found by his twin sister. I'd completely forgotten you disappeared like that. Three times. What? I was just thinking that it was three times that a kid from this house went missing and turned up again with amnesia. No wonder the media went so crazy. Twice would have been weird. But considering what had happened before... It also makes sense why Mom and Dad were so eager to get out of here. And were so nervous about coming back. Spencer stared down at the cuttings, biting his lip. This was... All my fault. All of it. Hey, you agreed to take my place. You agreed to be a changeling without even knowing what it meant. To save me. And I was so hateful to you all this time, even though I was the one to blame. <laughs> I gave Spencer a solid smack on the back of the head. Nora! Stop it! Stop trying to find someone to blame here. We were seven. What seven-year-old makes smart decisions? You were being manipulated by the Fae then, just as you have been this time. No one could expect a seven-year-old to fight back against that. You're not to blame here. It's them. It's that... That stupid white-haired... Taking advantage of children. Fairies are horrible. Spencer hesitated. 
then to my surprise pulled me into a hug. Ah, my heart. The twins are making up. Yay. I sat there stiffly for a few seconds before I realized what was happening. Then I wrapped my arms against his shaking shoulders and squeezed him gently. Aww. Yay. <laughs> oh, this is delightful. I love this. I'm so sorry. I'm so, so sorry. Come on. I thought you grew out of this crybaby stuff. He just sobbed harder as I rested my cheek against his head. Those stupid fairies. I was having to fight the urge to storm my way to that fairy hill and tear it down with my bare hands. Hurting Spencer was not something I would forgive. Ever. We sat like that for a long time. Until his sobs finally subsided and he pulled away, rubbing at his eyes awkwardly. I reached up and squished his cheeks together gently. Feel better? No. I cracked up at the sight of his smooshed up mouth. He looked terrible. He shoved my hands away, glaring as he wiped his eyes. Shut up. I think we should call Allie. Tell her what we found. Then again, Allie might already know about it. We'd known her our entire lives. If Spencer went missing, surely she'd have known. Confirming it with her might give us more insight as to why Mom and Dad hid it. I'm going to grab my phone and call her, okay? Spencer nodded, pulling the scrapbook back over to him. I'll be back in a minute. I hurried upstairs, leaving Spencer in the kitchen alone. My original suspicion had actually proven correct. I wasn't the fairy's original target. Spencer was. I'd been the replacement. Spencer hadn't spent long under that hill, just a few days, but I wondered if that was the source of his faint traces of fairy magic. It might also be why they could manipulate him so easily now, and maybe even why he kept the ability to see fairies past childhood. It wasn't until that stupid white-haired woman took the vision in his eye that he'd seemed to lose that. Wait! A white-haired woman with horns? Why hadn't I thought of this earlier? I forgot Allie for the moment and ran to my closet, tearing through my things to get at some of my old artwork. I pulled out an old canvas board and stared down at the blue eyes peering up at me from it. There she is. A white-haired woman with horns. Icy blue eyes. A penetrating stare. A woman I'd dreamed about for years. I'd painted her so many times. I thought... For a long time, I thought she was just sort of a character I'd concocted. Or an old imaginary friend. Or even some kind of symbolic mental image of myself. But no. This was her. This was the one whose body I'd been in. The one who'd hurt Spencer's eye. The one who'd taken me away. I felt a decidedly unhealthy level of rage when I looked down at her, and the urge to burn every single one of the artworks of her. This... this... bitch! My hands tightened around the edges of the painting, then I flung it to the floor, going to get my phone. I needed to calm down a little. I sat on my bed and sent a flurry of texts to Allie, explaining what we'd found. There was a long delay before she called back. I haven't thought about that in years. But yes, I do remember. I hadn't made the connection, to be honest. But you're right. I was told to never mention it to you guys. So Spencer went inside that hill. And you followed him and set up the contract. Yeah. The hill went dormant right after that. Looks like they want you both back now. The fact Spencer was in their hill, in their control, could be why they still have a hold on him. I thought that too. You spent years there, but they only had your body, never your soul. Not true for him. Keep a very, very close eye on him. And don't leave him alone. Will their control not be hampered by warts? Not necessarily. Got it. I shoved my phone in my pocket and started downstairs. I was halfway down the hall when I heard... 
Something that sounded suspiciously like the back door opening. No. No, no, no! There was no way this was happening right after Ali warned me. That would be way too stupid! I ran down the hall and stairs to an empty kitchen and back door swinging wide open. Spencer! I flew outside, nearly tumbling off the back porch. I saw him for just a split second before he stepped into the fairy ring. Dang it! And was gone! Oh, no, don't run in after Spencer. That is the stupidest plan. No! No, no, no! They had him again! I fumbled to get my phone out of my pocket. Have... Have to call Allie, you and anyone! Nora? He was in the middle of clambering over the fence into my yard. I assumed he'd heard the commotion. Man, you have very good ears. You heard that before the vampire and the werewolf? I'm very impressed. I heard shouting. What are you doing outside? I blubbered incoherently as I dropped my phone and ran to him. They took... Spencer, he went into the fairy ring! What? That... That idiot! Why are either of you even outside? Fairies... Controlling him, I think. I don't know! I just saw him a split second before he went in. Ewan shoved me back toward the house. Get inside! Call Allie! He took off toward the ring. Wait, don't you go in there! No, wait! I tried to grab his arm, but he shook me off and darted straight into the lopsided ring of mushrooms. Like Spencer, he was gone as well. Ewan! No! I staggered toward the ring myself and over the edge. I really wasn't thinking clearly, but I was determined to go after them. I couldn't lose... either of them. I mean, they're both your boys. Not Spencer, not again! But there was no flash of light, no sudden teleportation, nothing. I stood in the center of the ring, bewildered and afraid. They... they locked me out?! No! I dropped to my knees and clawed at the ground, ripping up the grass, the dirt, tearing my nails and mushroom caps. But there was nothing. No! I sobbed in defeat, clutching huge handfuls of grass as I bowed over in the cold, begging them to give my brother back. Oh no, maybe I should have ran in. I don't know how long I was there before I felt something warm and soft on my head. Huh? Uh, my brownie friend. I looked up, startled to see a very familiar little figure in front of me. It tipped its head to the side and smiled slightly as I sat up, scrubbing at my face with dirty hands. The brownie had my phone with it and shoved it my way, chattering softly. I swallowed hard, my throat tight and aching. Thank you for not being upset at me for tearing up mushrooms. Right. Okay. Right. I had to call for help. I got shakily to my feet looking around. There were... supposed to be other people watching the house, but Ewan was the only one that came. Come to think of it... It was eerily quiet. Not normal quiet. Something was definitely wrong. I scrubbed my hands clean on my jeans and shakily dialed Allie's number. She picked up immediately, thank goodness. Nora? <sighs> what? Help! They... Caught Spencer. And Ewan. And s something is... wrong... around the house. Too dark. Too quiet. We're on the way! Get in your room and wait there! Okay! I ran upstairs, still biting back tears, as I huddled on my bed feeling useless and afraid as I waited for help to come.